This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today, I want to talk about scaling Bitcoin with the Liquid Network and the Lightning Network. If you don't know much about the Liquid Network, I will link to two videos that you can watch first, and I'll link to them in the description notes below, Bitcoin and the Liquid Network. And also this video, which I made yesterday, is Layer 2 Bitcoin, a ship coin. Just to review, we have these different layers. So we have Layer 1 on-chain, the base layer. These are all synonyms for the Bitcoin blockchain itself and the fundamental Bitcoin network. And then we have Layer 2 solutions like the Lightning Network. This is a Layer 2 that uses payment channels rather than a blockchain. And then we have another solution called the Liquid Network, which I talked about in that video, which I linked to. This is a Layer 2 that uses a pegged sidechain where blocks are built and signed by Federation members. So no proof of work is involved. There's no real mining. Now for both Liquid and the Lightning Network's Bitcoin BTC itself must be locked up on chain before it can be used on that layer two. So there's no possibility of creating more than 21 million Bitcoin. There are a bunch of questions about this that I wanna answer from yesterday's video. If Bitcoin, if BTC is like gold, then layer two is like the dollar. I agreed, I said yes, but only if the dollar had a fixed, enforceable, verifiable supply that did not exceed its gold backing. This was the problem. The U.S. cheated and printed more dollars in the late 60s and early 70s than they had gold to back it. Another question from viewers, do lightning or liquid eat into on-chain transaction fees that would otherwise be earned by Bitcoin miners, thereby destabilizing Bitcoin security as the block subsidy falls to zero. We had the halving just about a month ago. The answer to this question is no, because both Lightning and Liquid require on-chain transactions to open and close channels, to splice in liquidity, to splice out liquidity, and to, in the case of Liquid, to lock up real BTC in order to issue LBTC on Liquid. You need to do these multi-sig transactions on chain and when you do this miners bitcoin miners get paid transaction fees lightning and liquid they're both sort of batching systems that can handle lots of transactions net them out then settle them on chain much in the same way that we have credit cards for example where there's lots of payments going back and forth payments and refunds and then the banks your credit card bank and your bank or another bank may settle up at the end of the month or the end of 90 days and then you have fedwire to take care of final settlement in the fiat system now in terms of lightning and liquid no one's going to use lightning or liquid if they are satisfied with on-chain fees assuming that the speed is okay for them since the base layer is the best in most ways better security more self-sovereign etc than liquid or lightning and this ensures because people will have this preference for on-chain transactions this ensures that liquid or lightning fees are always going to be lower than on-chain that also ensures that miners have demand for their precious block space on chain because that's the first place people will try to go until they get priced out by transaction fees by very high transaction fees as we're going to talk about if you're finding this video helpful so far i just ask you to help to support the channel hit the subscribe button leave a like leave a comment question suggestion for a future video also share this video with a friend or family member does anyone know if Liquid has the same problem as Lightning with opening and closing channels when fees are high? My response, Liquid does not because it is a blockchain, not payment channels. You don't have to worry about forced closes, which sometimes happen with Lightning payment channels or anything like that. There would be on-chain fees to peg into LBTC, which is Liquid Bitcoin, which is what moves around on the Liquid network. There would be on-chain fees to peg into LBTC and peg back out into BTC, but you could choose the timing of those and not be forced to do it when fees are high on chain. So again, liquid batches up transactions, and then you can settle them and pull them back out as BTC when you need to. There are also a lot of negative reactions to liquid and the trust model involved. This is Vincino saying, trusting 11 out of 15 Federation L2 model, layer two model, is just as bad as trusting my own bank. Well, I'm not sure it's quite that bad. Who would want to have a model where you have to trust someone holding your money? My response, true, that's true, but what are you going to do when it costs $1,000 to do a single Bitcoin transaction on chain? We have many variations on this theme. Love your work. Payment rails on BTC are not meant for long-term storage. It's a friggin' wallet for paying stuff. Use your brain. Don't keep a lot there. My response, the same response, what are you going to do when it costs $1,000 per transaction to make a transaction on chain to move a small amount of your Bitcoin out of cold storage? to send to someone cold storage 
and movement of an asset on a network like the Bitcoin network are very closely tied because you want to be able to move stuff into cold storage, move stuff out of cold storage. And so there's really no way to escape these issues unless you're maybe just going to hodl for 100 years. But even then, there's a possibility you have to move your Bitcoin from maybe you're moving it from single SIG to multi SIG for increased security or something like that. And then you'll still have to deal with on chain transaction fees. Another comment very similar, but let's keep it honest. Six people responsible for signing on the Polygon network is bad, but 11 out of 15 I'm supposed to trust here is good. Again, referring to the Federation members and the Federation multisig on Liquid. Trustless or GTFO, I say, ship coins. And I think this was unfair comparison, as I said in my comment. You're comparing a ship coin layer one Polygon with a Bitcoin layer two Liquid Polygon or Matic is presumably controlled by a small group of insiders and pre-mined beneficiaries, while Bitcoin is not controlled by anyone. Trustless sounds great, and it is great, but what are you going to do when Bitcoin on-chain fees are $1,000 for a simple transaction? This is the point at which many of us will have already had to migrate to higher layers like Liquid or Lightning or Fediments or something like that. Uh, Gypsy, Jedi, Might, 2926. In my opinion, it's just another way to corral people into another centralized platform, presumably referring to the Liquid Network here. There's only one layer and one way. That way is the Bitcoin way and the Bitcoin network. Anything else is substandard. We don't need all this other garbage. Satoshi gave us the gift and it's perfect the way it is. It is a beautiful system, but unfortunately, as I responded, 8 billion people cannot use the base layer directly. Bitcoin was always intended to scale in layers like any other money. This is what I think Bitcoin's end game looks like. Completely full blocks that provide final settlement for the net results of transactions that take place on higher layers. Lightning payment channels, for example, let's say you have node A and node B and they're sending sats back and forth. Maybe they do 10 million different transactions and they also route transactions across the network. And then what happens when they're done or they decide they're done or there's a forced close or something like this, you settle the net result of all those transactions on layer one. You could do it every week, every month, every year. Very important, Bitcoin's base layer, and a lot of ship coiners misunderstand this still, Bitcoin's base layer is meant to settle economically dense transactions. For example, what we just talked about, that net result of those 10 million transactions going back and forth in that lightning payment channel. Bitcoin's base layer is meant to settle these kind of dense transactions, which net out all the other economic activity and that require strong final settlement guarantees. If you don't require this, you can just leave your money in the Lightning Channel and continue to use it. So buying a coffee at Starbucks, the quintessential example, this is not a transaction that belongs or will ultimately be able to take place on layer one. These low price, low value transactions will be priced out as they should be because when you're buying a cup of coffee for $5 and a store is selling you a cup of coffee for $5, if that payment falls through or gets reversed, it's really no big deal for either party. But for example, when you're buying a house and you need to essentially wire a million dollars using the Bitcoin network, sending a million dollars worth of Bitcoin using the Bitcoin network, this is something that requires final settlement very strong final settlement guarantees. And this is how money always scales. As we said, it scales in the fiat system. You have credit cards and checking accounts and savings accounts, and then you have banks speaking to each other. And then you have you have ACH, for example. And then at the really the base layer, you have Fedwire for large transactions that require final settlement, very strong final settlement guarantees. This is how money always scales. And on-chain Bitcoin is in the process of evolving to be a pure settlement layer like this, akin to Fedwire in the legacy system, but again, not controlled by corrupt bankers. Another solution that we didn't talk about here is, is Fediments, which I've spoken about before. You can imagine a Fediment as something on the similar uh, Federation trust model, and you have all these different Fediments where people can trade with each other inside of the Fediment using Chami and eCash that's backed by Bitcoin, and then Bitcoin can be sent across the Lightning Network between Fediments. So you could think of Fediments as like these islands of Bitcoin federations that are then connected by the Lightning Network. These are some ideas about how Bitcoin can scale and how Liquid and Lightning may fit into that. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.